start assembling the stringers back on because we can put this side, the uh, top side stringers in, put them in because it doesn't stop us putting the ribs in from what we've got to do. Yeah. It doesn't stop us no. putting the other ones in. Yeah. So that'll give us a chance to pop some skins on this end. Yeah. That second plate riveted on the... the no, it's not the, riveted. It's not all riveted to it. Oh, is it? You've got the two plates joined, have you? Yeah. Yeah, you were saying that last week, yeah. You see if it can come down. Oh, yeah, yeah. See where you have, you could see it riveted. Good. That's all riveted on. Yeah. It's just pinned in position at the moment. Yeah. So you've got to take it off because we've got a all the uh, plug rivet threads in, yeah. the, in the spark. Yeah, John was saying something about waiting for a tap to come. To yeah. Tap them out. Yeah, I've just pinned it in position because I've yeah. been pinning everything up to make sure it all lines up properly. And did it? Yeah, fairly. We'll, yeah. We're one bracket missing that are completely rotted away. Oh. So, uh, to try and make one. Yeah. Do you know, have you got a drawing for it then? I think Bob's got a drawing in yeah. there. The trouble is the matter of steel. So where's the, where's the problem then? Making it with steel, the bracket. Is it a, it's actually folding it and then it'll have to be welded. Something they had made up before when they were going to do James. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. See, and it's uh, steel and then it's welded. Yeah. So it's, it's we can't use these because the holes are in the wrong place and the yeah. angle's slightly different. So. Yeah. So put this in this end rib in the correct position. So we can make this yeah. So we can make this dig up and hold it. Yeah. Once you've got the swimmers in up here, that'll bring that back into where it's supposed to be. Yeah. And put the skins on and that'll lift any sag out of it. Yeah. Now that'll give you a solid to Solid structure then to the jig. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it'll give us a, a reference point well, where we can set this jig up, yeah. make this jig too, yeah. and attach it, yeah. and then we'll be. Uh... The French wing. Stringers have been painted and fitted to the top side of the wing. The skin has been pinned to the end rib and the stringers. This squares up the structure and end rib number five. John and Les can now construct the engine, keeping everything in line. These parts are fabricated from the original jig, which is no longer in use. Ask them why one shorter than the other. I missed that bit, John. One shorter than the other because this, this is recycling, you see. Yeah. Because it, these are the original uprights of the, the oh. bit that used to go across the top, yeah. and these bits are the bit that used to go mm. along the top, and now they're on the floor and that's sticking up. That's because they were three different lengths. Yeah. Um, Instead of cutting them, leave them as they are. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's better than that. When in the correct position, the jig will be raw bolted to the ground. Two horizontal U-shaped channels bolted to rib number five. These will then be bolted to the jig. This will help to line up rib 22 and in between ribs and outer rib 5. And back to the Doncaster fuselage. The new port skins have been removed leaving just the frame. These skins are now at the painters.
You've put a lot of work into this doorway, door frame, Phil. Uh, yeah, there's a huge amount of work gone into the doors. Even though we've done the, the obviously the big bits, which is former, the former 32, the former 30, uh, the reinforcing skins here is about 16 gauge, and then there's another reinforcing skin uh, that goes to here. Mm. And then the out skin here is three pieces of skin there. Yeah. Plus all brand new frames here at the top uh, and the bottom. That one, that one, that one. Now we're doing all the ancillaries, which are all the little cleats that attach that to the former. So there's a, there's a cleat there underneath here. There's another cleat here on the top. Similarly, a cleat there, a cleat there. There's hundreds of minutes. There's cleats everywhere. I mean, mm. every single one of these stringers here where the stringer attaches to the former there is a little cleat on the yeah. so originally when they built the lancasters on the production line they actually formed the skeleton first which is the formers and the stringers so you ended up with a skeleton then they attached the skin to yeah. the skeleton but because of the, the, with this restoration, we've had to do it slightly back to front. We've actually waited, while we're waiting for the formers to be done, we fitted the stringers and the skins. Then we fitted the formers when they were, yeah. were ready. So we still end up with the, the end results the same, but we've just done it back to front. So um, at the moment, I'm just starting to put the final cleats in around the door. Yeah. And then, um, in actual fact, the, the lower part of the door, the upper part of the door, and the aft part of the door have actually got a wood, a wooden frame. Right, yeah. And the forward part of the door, where the hinges attach, it attaches to the actual former. Yeah. So um, there's wood yeah. around the door. Uh, have you tried? Well, you haven't obviously haven't put the wooden frame in, but you've got the door for this from um, France. No, uh, so no there's door. a bit of debate going on at the moment whether to uh, get a door made, uh, just a, uh, a wooden one, a wooden door made. Well, they are wood anyway, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, they are wood. That's right. It's whether to use jades or to just um, mm. fabricate a door yeah. for this, uh, for, because Andrew would like to have the door uh, on for uh, film work. Yeah. So when this goes on to Jane, there will be a door. Yeah. I had a word with Keith about Rib 22, which has been painted and on his bench. Rib 22 is the inboard rib of the outer wing. It is made from what looks like square channeling, but has an opening down the centre of one side. So the anchor not strips, are they? Yeah, yeah. gang channels they call them. Call them what, sorry? Gang channels. Gang channels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they do have a bit of play in them, don't they? Sideways play. Yeah, so these ones are, they're held in with, it's, it's just like a, an anchor nut, yeah. but instead it's floating yeah, it's inside. Like, yeah, it's yeah. Like six, and eight, just, eight of an inch, Yeah, and there's just a little spring clip, like a circlet that goes round it, and if you see it sits in the slots. Yeah. So if the advantage of this one is if you get a damaged one, you can take that spring clip out and change the single nut. You haven't got to take the nut strip off. No, that's good, that isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, these actually sit. These are the upper and lower members of rib 22. Yeah. You know, the one that's kind of crisscrossed. Yeah. And these sit inside there. They sit actually sit inside it because the um, closure panels between the outer wing and the inner wing screw to those, you know, the strips? Yeah, yeah. So they sit in there. So I'm going to drill them off before, before we assemble this yeah. because it's got to be riveted up with it, everything assembled because these, I don't know if you can see it, yeah. I'll sit on this one. 
no way you can get into them once you've riveted it. No, the trouble it. is that the inboard, because it's the, the very inboard one of these, the, this row of holes here, right, is this pattern of hole. Because it's screwed over the top. So, those are riveted through that, through that, and then into that. So you've got to get inside there when it's all assembled to, to the do it, up. would you? No. And then you've got the rivet tail. So that will be inside so. the rivet tail will be inside this. Yes. Yeah. I've got some old one, haven't I? Yeah. So the the uncle nuts fit the other side of this channel in. They sit inside it, yeah. That fits on the top, and then you've got to rivet the anchor nuts through that skin. And, and that, yeah. yeah. These are, they're all, that's where they're all riveted in. Yeah. These are the original that come off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not really reusable. No, they're not, are they? <laughs> well, technical little bit of equipment, isn't it? How you do, Lancaster? Oh yeah, it's surprising. For its age, yeah. it's amazing what, amazing what they actually did. So uh, that'll be some fun. Yeah, good. Thanks, Keith. The Doncaster fuselage looks a lot smarter now when it first arrived. In the comments, Mark may have failed to ask how many times do they sharpen the drills. So oh, I put this one to Keith. Done. No. Wrong in a bit. Sorry? Wrong in a bit. I throw them in the bin. Oh dear. Yeah. Never sharpen tools. Because no. when you run I was working, we used to have a tool shop and you used to take them to them and they used to sharpen them. Yeah. On the Yeah we can get sharpening machine. They never cut. No. Never cut like a new one. No. no. Especially if you. A lot, a lot of the time they use cobalt tools and you can't sharpen them. Because as soon as you sharpen them, it becomes an HSS. Yeah. Because it takes the temper out of it. Yeah. No, never do, mate. Right. You can, you can buy a pack of 10 drills that I use for about, for about 9 quid, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, time you said they got somebody to sharpen them or you spent time sharpening them. Yeah. Yeah. Right, thanks Keith.